Welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry to keep you waiting this long, but I've been busy doing a third attempt getting from Norway to Itterkortumit in Scorsby Sound, Greenland. I love it! <laughs> At my first attempt, the Scorsby Sound was packed with ice. The second time, I was stopped by COVID already in the Faroe Islands. Uh, they said that I, I tested positive. As I strongly believe that consistency will get you success, I set out for yet another adventure to try reaching this goal. Some weeks before departure, I had spent a couple of weeks in hospital due to some flaring of my annoying ulcerous colitis. Eventually, my doctor said that I was good to go. So with no time to waste, I wiped the dust of my 46-year-old Contessa 35, Tessie, to give it another shot. So here we go. It was early Monday morning. The boats from Shetland Race had left Lurvik the day before, leaving the city in a peace and quiet that was almost unrecognizable. It was time to make ready for chapter two. Sailing from Lurvik to the Faroe Islands, 220 nautical miles across the North Atlantic. I wanted to explore some more of Shetland. So the plan was to head north to visit the little village of Mid Yell, five hours sailing away. That would also put me in a good position to head out in the North Atlantic Ocean Tuesday morning. So I was ready to go again. just plowed straight into a big yellow cardinal boy. <laughs> I was filming, well you can see it on your video yourself, I was occupied filming some thing out in the ocean there, a rock, and I forgot that I had that boy in uh, my bow. Wow, I need to wake up. Luckily the boat is strong, it didn't take too much damage. See here. Anyway, it's crazy. So unnecessary. Anyway, welcome back. I'm on my way to uh, Midial, and it's about a couple of hours left. And then we're gonna settle down, find a pier, and uh, and uh, have a good night's sleep. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> See you in a bit. So while we give Eric a moment to recover from his little self-made incident, this is a good opportunity to present to you my kind sponsor, NordVPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. When you are connected to an unsecured, open network, either with your phone, tablet, computer or even a smart TV, your IP address is exposed to everyone else using the same network and maybe someone with bad intentions. Install NordVPN on all of your devices for secure browsing, as this will safely hide your IP address. With NordVPN you can get access to over 5,800 servers in 59 countries, which means you can switch VPN coverage to your geographical location at any time. Connect with one click and enjoy the fastest VPN speed on the market today. 
So head over to nordvpn.com slash Erik Underå to get your exclusive NordVPN deal. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. After five hours of sailing downwind along this beautiful part of Shetland, the entrance into mid Yell was reached. Okay, so now we are closing into mid Yell. It's just inside here, and uh, I'm gonna find a play, place to tie up. Uh, so I've never been in before, so it's always a little bit, a little bit uh, stressful when you, when it's shallow and you're not familiar with the place. But let's see uh, what we can find out there. Luckily, finding a good spot wasn't too hard when you have nice local people like Michael to show the way. Okay to stay here? Mid Yell is a beautiful quiet place. Safely hidden behind the big pier, I had a good night of sleep to gather energy for the next big leg across the North Atlantic to the Faroe Islands. All right, good morning. Eggs and bacon for breakfast. Start the engine to charge the, the batteries to be ready. And uh, the wind seems to be perfect. Right. And we are soon off for Faroe Islands. That's amazing. Wow. I'll try to cover up the damage on my port side here. Not to let in too much water on the, on the damage while sailing to Faroes. All right. As usual, my nerves were tense and the good old fear set in. The wind were quite fresh as I left mid -Yell. This time, the reports predicted a southeasterly downwind all the way to the Faroes. Usually, I would head for the main city of Torsan. But a good Faroes friend of mine, Paul Jakob, had invited me to his home in Skålavika, situated at the island of Sande. So the course were adjusted thereafter. But that's the mainsail up. So now we're just going to slide through the to the sound sir, out in open ocean and. Uh, we're headed for the Faroes, 182 nautical miles, and I'm on my way to to Sunday on uh, Faroe Islands because uh, there's a guy there called Paul Jakob, and uh, he uh, provided me with food last time I was there. Last year when I got COVID, I was locked down in my boat, and he provided me with, with a lot of food, and I never got to pay him back because our bank, Norwegian and Faroe Bank, didn't want to communicate. So. So he just said, well, give me some NBDS t-shirts, <laughs> Eric, and uh, I'm happy. So I, uh, I got a box of t-shirts for him and his son, and we're going to sail the box home, home to uh, Sunday and deliver it. That was the guy, Michael, from uh, Midial, helping me with the moorings uh, yesterday. And thanks for the, for the beers yesterday, Michael. Perfect. I tend to forget to better up my bald head from time to time. How does that look? A 
sudden strong breeze occurred, making Tessie wash away downstreams to the sounds at no time. 9.6 knots through the sound there, it's a 3 knots down current with us. And uh, we're about to encounter the open ocean now, so I'm gonna do one last uh, jive. And that's gonna be it, I think, on our course, on our way to, to Faroe Islands. What a beautiful place to be sailing through these sounds. But now it's, uh, it's business time. Now it's open ocean. It's gonna be a, a fresh one, I think, the, the first hours. So let's do the, the last jibe now. So with one last jibe, we set our course into the big blue ocean and put our faith into the hands of the weather gods. And you can see the rudder is all the way over here, down here. So it's uh, pulling the boat upwards so to, against the wind. So uh, I have to do that. Okay, let's see. I turned up against the wind to get the third reef in the mainsail. Then I got the boat back on course. When on course, the hydro generator got deployed, followed by adjusting and engaging the hydro vein. Let's see how she stares now. Now Tessie was efficiently sailing and charging herself. Winds were fresh and stable, but even with Tiger as a mascot for good company and fortune, the weather gods had some other plans for us. Well, the wind died out. Six knots of wind. We are 30 miles offshore, so we had a blast out there with uh, some really nice winds, but uh, it's supposed to uh, come from the side and alter to, to get uh, downwind now. So I think this is the change. That's why it's quiet, and then it's gonna slowly change to south uh, easterly winds so we get the downwind winds. So we all know what that means. Down with the sails and on with the engine. Without engine, I still find my peace, sitting all alone in my little boat, watching the sunset making the end of one day, but the start of a new one. I will always be grateful for every new day I live to get. And if the new day can be provided with some breath of wind, I'll be the happiest guy in the world simple things. All right, 50 nautical miles left. And we are just straight downwind with the uh, spread sails like this. And it works, it really works. The hydrovane is uh, steering and uh, we are doing five and a half knots. And things look good. We're definitely going to reach Fair Islands uh, around 10, 11 o'clock tonight. Yep. Off the boat back and forth. The wind is straight downwind, so it's, it's uh, hard to find a comfortable 
place to stay. But uh, my best place is uh, way forward in a, in a forward cabin. And just just lay there, not not to rest or sleep, but just to just to have somewhere to stay while the rocking and the rolling is going on. Then I can also have a lookout. First sight of land on the radar. We're gonna take it easy, uh, the entrance here. The entrance to Skolavik looked a little scary from a distance in slight fog. But as we got closer, the concrete pair came clear and leading me safely inside the tiny harbor. Tak, tak. It's so nice to be greeted by good friends like Paul Jakob after a long, moist ocean passage. And to slide into a cozy, welcoming harbor like this is for sure a memory maker. Paul's parcel of my promised merch got delivered. He is a true Far East citizen and knows all of the stories around these islands. So we went on a road trip to have a look. <laughs> Say hello to Paul Jakob. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we are going to see if we can have some, find some nice stories to tell you. Yes, absolutely. I'm sure we will. First out was the beach of Sultuvik. The British cargo ship Principia caught fire and sank when she subsequently struck a rock of this very beach in 1895. The captain and 27 others were drowned and only one man was saved. Her anchors were brought up to make a beautiful memorial and some of her wooden cargo hatches was used to make some of the benches of the historical St. Olaf's Church, which is the oldest church on Faroe Islands. May all these lost sailors rest in peace. Along the road we visited the most incredible small villages. It's mind-blowing to see the remoteness of these small places and even more mind-boggling that people have settled down here hundreds of years ago and still do until this day. It must be like magic to find your peace in places like this. After two days here, I needed to face reality again. I needed to get going. Well, welcome to Skolavik on Faroe Islands. Fantastic place. Uh, this is actually day two. I was about to uh, give you an introduction yesterday, but uh, Polyokov come down, came down and uh, he showed me all of the island. And now we just had a cup of coffee and uh, I'm ready to go. I'm going uh, headed up to, uh, to Torsa now to, uh, to uh, have a look around there and prepare for the big ride over to Iceland. 
So we'll see how that goes. Okay. Dense fog all over, can't see nothing. But we're closing into Torosam now. Some minutes. There you can finally see the pair first sign of Torosam. sound good to be back and uh, yeah I'm gonna stay here until the weather reports get better uh, it's good to Iceland now uh, the next two days but I need four days to get up there and the next uh, four days is not good so I don't know how long I'm gonna stay here but we will see and I will see you in the next video from Fair Islands to Iceland all right take care and goodbye for now, see you later. Oh. So follow my further adventure as I cross over to the huge, incredible island of West Manaea, Iceland. But getting there came with a price, staying for two painful weeks in hospital on the Faroe Islands before being able to cast off. It sure turned out to be a story about what you get back for not giving up. Let's go. Follow my Facebook and Instagram for news and updates. Support me on Patreon or PayPal. And of course, get your NBJS merchandise by following the links in the video description. See you soon, Eric. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the, the video. Uh, I just want to make a big thanks to uh, Alex and Lucy. Uh, Alex is one of my viewers who watches my videos and uh, his sister works in Instagram. So his sister Lucy got, got my account back up and running, the old account with 42,000 followers. It's incredible, it, I, it would never go without it. Uh, Instagram is really hard to, to contact. So thank you so much for saving that. And another funny thing, I ruptured my uh, the, the tendons of my right shoulder, so it's it's not working anymore. <laughs> I have to lift my arm in place on the mouse pad to 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 work. But once it's on a mouse, it's okay. But then I have to lift it back, so I cannot move it anyway. But I have a couple of doctors working on it, so uh, luckily I'm just in my office working, so it's it's fine. If it's, it's um, offshore on a sailboat, it would be a different story, I think. So I was lucky that happened now and not offshore. Okay, see you soon.